Okay, everyone, so in this episode, we're going to continue on the application that we were making before with particle devices. So I will navigate in my terminal to the directory where that application exists. It just so happens to be here. It's in CRUD. So I'll change my directory. It's on my desktop in the CRUD directory. So now that I'm there, ls to make sure that everything is good and everything is where it needs to be. So here's a visual display of what's going on on the terminal over here. Now let's actually go ahead and open up the application. And I messed up there. I don't want to open up a Dreamweaver. I'll open up with Sublime. Dreamweaver is a little bit too blech for me right now. You know, kind of throw up if I keep looking at that tonight. Not that it's not a great application. Whatever. Uh, get away from you. So, just to recap of what this application is right here, I've included the Particle API, made sure, by the way, that it's installed on my application by running that command line uh, right here, the command, npm install Particle API JS, boom, just double check it. So when you do that, I'm able to include some stuff inside of my application right here. Uh, the token, I've actually, this time, uh, put it in a different file right here so if I didn't have this then your token would be something like whatever your access token is in real life it would be some weird little thing that you see in the website and I'll show you where to get that right now might as well right build that particle IO and then you're gonna click here in settings and when you click settings it'll have your token and you can just go ahead and copy and paste it there and you would put it in this area but like I said I have it in a different file so I'll just go ahead and require it and now I took this directly from the particle website right here I just went down and you can list your devices for a specific user right here and that's exactly what I did look I just copied that baby right there and I pasted the sucker. The difference that I did was I said we're going to go into the first element in the array that is the device's object and I want to see that name property. So when I call this really what I should be seeing is just the name of the first device associated with my particle account. And the account again is associated like everything depends on that token right there the token is the magic key in this instance so if it's successful then it's gonna go ahead and list that first element if it fails on us however then we're gonna see an error and you wanna go ahead and we can just call it we can run that run that so I'll say node app and bam, just as we thought, we're going to see the first device associated with my particle account. Now let's try to speed things up a little bit. We're going to kick it into a high gear. We're going to get hot because it is winter and we need some heat up in this. Um, we're going to create a little server with Express. I'm sure that you guys have heard of it. So I, I want to look at the documentation. Install Express NPM. So installing Express, you just do quick Google searches, guys. I'm not going to lie. A lot of what I'm doing is Google searching. And yeah. So what you would do is install Express and then throw in the save flag right there. Make sure that it's included in your file now by doing, in your application rather, by going var Express is equal to require Express. And I'm going to go a little fast. And I'll try to explain everything, but what Express is, is it's a framework to create a web uh, server for Node. And it's really cool. A lot of people use it. It's really, really popular. And moving forward, now that we have Express, I'll do var server is equal to an instantiation of Express right there. Boom. Cool, cool, cool. And down here is the important part. This is where we're actually going to initiate the server and tell it to start listening for requests on it. And we're going to give it a port because everything 
on a computer requires a port if it's going to be, you know, like people are going to try to communicate with it, it has to communicate, or rather people have to communicate with this computer on a certain port, so that's what we're specifying right here. In this case, it's going to be port 3000, I'll show you what that means. And we'll do a function as soon as somebody, as soon as we um, have that server listening on port 3000, we're going to run this function here, and we're just going to do something very simple and just have it say we're running, just so we know that this is good. Now, running on port 3000. And just put express, you might as well, right? There. All right, cool. And I'm pretty sure this is going to break somewhere, but let's try it. Yeah. Console.log. Sorry, guys. I'm a little rusty. And I'm pretty sure it's going to break somewhere still. Oh, it's running. So what does that mean? So that means if I go in my web browser and I try to go to localhost on port 3000 right here, I'm going to actually communicate with this web server that I just created in Node. It's pretty badass. So let's actually see what happens right now. So far, we don't have any functionality for what's happening. So that's why it's going to say cannot get the index page of this web server because we haven't actually said in the application to do anything once somebody hits there. So once they do, let's go ahead and do this. I'll say server.get, meaning that when someone makes a get request, which is what we just did to this web page right here, we made a get request, then we're going to do the following function. And this function is going to have a couple of parameters in it, and it's going to be the request and the response of the function. Now, when we go and hit this, for now, what we're going to say is just, we're going to want the console to say somebody hit index page. Might as well. Someone requested the index page. So let's do that. So by default, the home page of every website is called the index page. And of course, I have to rerun the app again. But instead of doing that, instead of uh, having to stop the app and run it again whenever we make a change, I'm going to do something else and I'm going to do node or rather npm install node mon dash dash save just to save it to this one project right here and now instead of running node and then the application I'm going to run node mon come on baby okay now that node mon is installed now instead of typing node app dot whatever node app I'm gonna type node mon app and now BAM whenever we make changes to our application we don't have to keep you know running that stopping and running it it's just gonna automatically do that for us so now look at that like our code says as soon as we try to request the home page on our server that we just created here we're gonna log to the console somebody requested that index page but now let's do some cooler stuff with it I want it to display what we're getting from the particle server over here I want it to display devices demented the first device in my application and in order to do that this is gonna require a little bit more work and let's try to move fast now guys because we are running out of time now we're gonna use a view engine for our server and that view engine in this case is going to be EGS, so I'll EJS, excuse me. So I'll go server dot set and the view engine, and we'll set it to EJS and save that right there. So far, okay, cool. So now instead, when they hit this index page we're actually going to give them a new we're going to give them like a web page they're going to be able to view something and so if I do terminal make sure I'm in that baby right there I'm going to stop the application altogether and now I'm going to do touch well new folder and we'll call this folder views 
and we'll navigate to inside that folder so CD views and inside here I'm going to touch and call this file EJS now if we go inside of our views over here we see that I've created a file called EJS and there's nothing inside of it make sure that we open it with the right application and I'll navigate to Sublime and now inside of EJS I'll just make this a standard HTML document really quick guys okay so now that we have this bad boy created right here what we can then do is test this out to see if that's gonna work and what we're gonna do here instead is do response excuse me that was the wrong place we're gonna wanna put response dot render the following and we're gonna render this view that we created over here and the views name is index and we're also going to pass a object with that index and this is the really cool thing about using this view engine which is what we're doing is that we're able to pass data to the view engine and this data that we're going to pass is going to be called content So we're passing this content data to this specific view right here and so far we don't have anything or we don't have a variable named content so let's actually create that now. Up here I will create this variable and call it content. And as of now it's empty but when we come over here, oh I guess I left that in the application the whole time and I was alluding to it, ha ha ha. Well, this content variable is actually going to uh, set the value for this one over here. What? What did I just say, right? Yeah, sorry guys. So this content variable will take on the value of the first object inside of this devices array. And we're getting this devices array from the particle server. This is what it's all about. This is what we want to display to this web page that we just created over here. So now, if I save this, run the application right here, we're going to again do nodemon. I'm pushing up to go to the previous commands that I've done. And did I get an error somewhere? Oh, so guys, look at this. Always know where you are, right? I was in the wrong directory, so push up, nodemon app. Now we're starting again. Now again, the code is running perfectly fine. What happens if I refresh this get request to my web page? So it says test. That's a mistake somewhere, right? Because we haven't actually written inside of this EJS file except for the test. So we'll again, open this up. Always open. And inside of here, rather than writing test, now we're going to start getting fancy and cool. We'll do a uh, percentage equals percentage, and we will say content. This is how we are able to transfer data between this application right here and a HTML, well, sort of HTML-ish page. We're using that view engine again, EGS. So. Right here, we're passing this content called content. Well, with the value of content. So I could have called this maybe like banana cow. And inside this other, this EJS file, then instead of content, I would have to call it banana cow. And if I save that, save that. When I refresh this page, if everything is correct, then I should instead see device name demented. Sweet. So, congratulations guys, there we go. Um, let's see what we can do in the next one. Let's just keep building on these applications.